Taiwan is a refuse pioneer boasting one of the highest household recycling rates in the world. Nonetheless, it must wrestle with growing piles of electronic waste. Toxic materials inside e-waste can cause severe environmental and health problems. Unless it acts quickly, this Asian tiger could drown in the products of its own success. On Taiwan's northwest coast, an elite team battles to devise a solution. Author Huang, rising star designer and winner of the World Economic Forum's Technology Pioneer Award. Ken Wu, a visionary seeking to transform a traditional industry and let Taiwan shine on a global stage. And Ken's father, Yao Shun Wu, a veteran materials expert with over 40 years of experience. Their mission, construct a state-of-the-art recycling plant to increase precious metals extraction, create new recycling solutions, and be a game changer for the industry worldwide. But the obstacles at the chosen site are formidable. With high groundwater and porous soil, creating a solid foundation will be a monumental task. Corrosive sea air can cause metal to rust, weaken, and fail. Located in Typhoon Alley, the structure must be able to endure winds in excess of 120 kilometers per hour. Then there's the scorching sun. Cooling the structure while keeping its carbon footprint light is a huge design challenge. To combat contamination, poor soil, and high groundwater, the team decides to use a mat foundation that can evenly distribute the heavy structural load. Engineers first excavate 7.8 meters down, then place a bed of steel and reinforce it with concrete. This raft-like foundation creates a secure base for Super Dragon's prized cargo, the gold and other precious metals they mine from e-waste. So we basically have a built a giant boat sitting on top of a sandbox. Ken wants to prove to people that in a bad environment, you can still build state-of-the-art building using the least amount of carbon footprint. For his father, Mr. Wu, the most important thing is about production. For us, that become a huge conflicting point from the very beginning. And for Chairman Wu, even high-tech production relies on the foundation of ancient tradition. That tradition arrives in the form of a feng shui consultant called upon by Chairman Wu to decide the eco plant's positioning and shape. The feng shui consultant has issued his proclamation. The new plant must follow the principal green dragon on the left, white tiger on the right to balance opposing yin-yang energies. A tall office building will embody the yang energy of the dragon, while the low factory building will represent the yin of the tiger. The building site and construction methods are set. Top eco designer Huang gets to work designing a stunning exterior for the building. But then comes an unexpected and startling request. Ken Wu and his father want more than a feng shui analogy. They want to make a dragon for all to see. The highlight is a chain of canopies linking factory and office tower. The canopies will help minimize the carbon footprint with solar panels to provide renewable energy and will also shelter the inner courtyard. The scale-like surfaces and curving installation call to mind the exalted mythical beast. We try to do all that with trash. And then Ken come up with the idea, I was like, why don't you use my trash? Ken Wu's company processes nearly a thousand tons of waste per year. In the past, e-waste recyclers simply stripped away precious metals and discarded or incinerated the rest, producing toxic gases, polluted water, and piles of useless scrap. Super Dragon recycles scrap into useful items, the company also lowers chemical use through careful sorting of wastewater. They are able to extract over 99% of the precious metals in the e-waste they receive. The challenge is to find a use for the growing piles of plastic that remain. The Climate system end up using 
e-waste, PC from DVDs and CDs. SDT I do recycle CDs, so they actually can extract the silver and you left over with PC chips. We are taking optical grade PC and turn that into a triple layer sandwich board, which is translucent at the same time, has to hit all the environmental standards. The MiniWiz team thinks they found the key to the materials puzzle. But Leo worries that it may not stand up to the intense winds at the site. At a lab in central Taiwan, the MiniWiz R&D team watches nervously alongside the lab technicians. A canopy panel has been installed in a steel frame to simulate its future setup. Inside the test chamber, the wind pressure will be increased until the specimen either passes the test or breaks apart. Under the watchful eyes of the technicians, the test begins. Jarvis Leo and his team have put months of hard work and millions of dollars of their clients' money into developing this material. If it fails, they will lose the trust of the Wu's and maybe the entire project. The pressure is on for both designers and the designed. The number on the meter reaches the required threshold. The canopy panel, made from recycled plastics, has withstood pressure equal to a strong typhoon and remained intact. The product of the R&D team's hard work has passed the stress test with flying colors. But this does not guarantee it will pass a real-world test or the scrutiny of Chairman Wu's expert eyes. Chairman Wu is a very, very sophisticated material scientist. So when we are working together, we are actually learning a lot from Mr. Wu. The new plant and younger generation will benefit from Chairman Wu's hard-won knowledge. But that knowledge came at a hefty price. With over 45 years in the business, Chairman Wu has witnessed the evolution of the industry. Like many of his generation in Taiwan, he was driven into unfamiliar territory by poverty and necessity. His proficiency was earned entirely by doing. In 1999, he was diagnosed with nasal cancer. After his illness, Chairman Wu began to balance environmental safety and profit. Now, his son is building the new plant based on these hard-earned lessons and decades of experience. This labor of love for Taiwan's recycling pioneers is paving the way for a future where nothing is wasted. E-waste is a looming problem on a global scale. This team of innovators in Taiwan has started tackling the issue in their own backyard, mining value from our discarded devices. Perhaps the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is not the bullion they create from reclaimed waste, but the example this eco-plant provides the world, the promise and possibility of a no-waste closed-loop society. <laughs>